Hey, welcome back to the channel. So we just finished our Writer's Bookshelf series with learning how to do places and writing settings that make sense. And one thing that um, I teased is the idea of finding map making software in order to make it a little easier to imagine what our scenes should look like. So what you're looking at right now is a map of Hybrid City, which is the uh, place where my Kendall Bella story, the Hybrid City Entrepreneur, takes place. And this is actually based on the game that I've been making since 2009. So this map is, I made this maybe five years ago. Uh, but if you zoom in a little bit, you can see how, uh, as we get closer, you can see some of the pixel layers coming in. And I know it looks a little complicated, but it's really not. This is actually based on a series of maps that I created and then kind of put together and labeled. Pretty straightforward stuff. And I used it just using the native game engine, which is uh, called the OHR RPG CE. And if you go in and you can see some of the names of the towns that I mentioned in, this, in the uh, book. And if I go in, edit tile map, you can see where I actually made the, the layout. And then, of course, you know, if I go into enter, you can see all my entire tile map. So it's really just straightforward uh, developing the, the map. And of course, like, you know, I made the map for the game, but um, you know, this map has also given me a bit of a visualization of where things are located. So if you look at things like you know, the shop down the street, which is the name of the uh, the uh, corner store where Buck goes to get his first batch of coffee grounds and you know, up the street here you've got uh, the whipping shed which is where he learns his training and all that and if we go to a different map um, if I can find my way around we'll actually go to Buck Street and then you can see his house and so this is an example of how I came up with uh, an idea so in short I just made a game and then I made the story out the game now, most people won't do that because that's crazy. Um, but the point is, is that the map exists because the game exists, but the map I can use to my advantage to kind of imagine my way around town. Now, this is not a complete version of hybrid because um, if you read the story, you'll find that there's a, a another park over in this area where Chet has his uh, shack. And then down here, you've got more municipal areas. Down here will also be in my life. And then think further down would be like where you have an industrial section and then up the, this way you'd have the school and all that so that's kind of like my vision of what the map looks like but to come up with this you know it's just a matter of using my imagination but because now I can see it I don't have to stretch my imagination too uh, far so what I want to talk about today is some options that we may have in order to develop maps uh, and there's so many different things to choose from that a lot of times you may not think to actually go and look uh, sometimes you might think about you know drawing this, this quick sketch on some kind of painting program and then calling it a day where we might hire somebody to make a map uh, but it doesn't need to be that complicated uh, so what we're going to look at today is just a few examples of map making software or software we can use to make a map in order to uh, see our visions come through and whether or not we choose to use the map for our book itself or if you want to integrate it into a planning program or whatever that's up to us as we go so let's take a quick look at some of our uh, options here and then uh, we'll uh, get going from there. So what we're looking at here is the place called Design Cuts. And this is one of uh, several areas you can find online where you can get um, designer uh, templates and, and apps and things for Photoshop or Affinity Photo, which is what I use. Uh, or Procreate is another one that's uh, up and coming. And if you decide to go this route, uh, this might uh, you know, be an easy way to just have your own style and uh, you can use your own painting program to do it. You look at, the, for example, Vintage Match. I think Vintage Maps, I believe, is a new one. You take a look, quick look inside. Um, you'll see they give you an idea of what it looks like, uh, what you can do with it. This actually may be just pre-made maps. I'm not sure if you can uh, design. So you have to be careful when you look to see if it's pre-made maps or if it's something you can actually use. This one here tells you that you can make maps. So this would be what we want to actually look at here. Uh, so if we want to make maps that look like this, like using Photoshop or one of our uh, various, or in this case would be Illustrator, uh, using one of our various preferred programs, and we can use their various stamps or brushes in order to make that. And then of course, you know, just wait for it to load. And the thing with Design Cuts is there's a lot of photos that have to load in, and they're not small. So in order to see what you can do, um, you have to kind of give yourself some time to wait for it. Uh, but you can also see what you can do with those maps when you're done. This one in particular looks like the continents are pre-made, so I don't know if that's going to be something that you'll want. But it does come with different paper styles. 
which might be nice. So if you're looking for that authentic kind of rough look, then that's one way you can go. Um, the one I have is this one over here called the uh, World Crafter Map Making Kit. And if we go inside here, um, you can get a demonstration of what that looks like. And then uh, again, when you wait for the images to load through, you'll get a better picture. And one thing you'll notice in the mock-up that they have here is that it's all simple sketches. Uh, there's nothing particularly outstanding here. I mean, this is literally uh, the most detail you're going to get. Um, and if you want to look at my example map, which we'll go over to Affinity Photo right now, um, I have mine called Ugly Land. You'll see this is what I made with my stamps and my um, my brushes. If you just go to the brushes over here and go into, I think it's called, uh, what is it called? Um, World Crafter map brushes. You'll see that these are the brushes that you'll use. So it's just a lot of like top topographical uh, stencils and things that you can use. But there's a lot of them. Um, so if you want simplicity and you don't want your map, if you don't care if your maps look good or look uh, really detailed, this is one way you can do it. And of course, it's got that vintage look. Uh, and it comes with uh, different paper styles. I don't have them loaded in right now because they're really uh, hefty on the memory. Uh, but I think it comes with eight map uh, backgrounds, but this is one of them that you can choose if you want. So uh, that's um, an example of what you can do with the painting program. If you want something more specialized than this though, then here's some options for you and what they do. So the first is the Pro Fantasy uh, software uh, pack. The big one here is Campaign Cartographer 3. Uh, if you go to their Maps Extravaganza uh, uh, special, you can actually get a bundle of their top uh, apps for $40 uh, until the sale's over, whenever that is. Uh, they may already be over by the time you watch this, but it doesn't hurt to go in and check. Uh, individually, I think these are also about 40 each uh, if you don't get them with the pack. But um, you can get an example of the type of maps you can create with these different uh, uh, versions. So the Campaign Cartographer 3 Plus will give you any traditional style of map. And it comes with a, a number of different templates. So you're not stuck with this particular type. Uh, it's just, you know, I think um, it comes with, a, I want to say a dozen different styles, but then you can also download more if you get one of their annuals, which is, it can add up. So you got to have some money for that to happen. But if you want something simple and basic, again, this is a dedicated a map maker where you can use uh, different stencils and things in order to create something this, you know, this interesting. Uh, there's uh, CD Designer 3, which allows you to zoom in a little bit on your map. Uh, it is a different style map with different style uh, stamps. It is separate from uh, the campaign cartographer. So you're not going to do a city map with this format. You are going to use something more specific. But um, again, if you want something that's more zoomed in, um, then you can do that. Dungeon Designer 3 is when you get really into the nitty gritty. So this is where you can build the interiors of complex castles or even if you want to build a house uh, that's an option for you there's different styles that allow you to get more modern um, if you really dig in so it would be in a use case for this so like if you're using obviously if you're like building a fantasy style um, map uh, then you know the campaign cartographer is the way to go but if you want to get more specific about let's say if you're building a mystery and you want to be able to figure out you know who did what in the mansion uh, you can build a mansion and then figure out where all the rooms are. So that would be the advantage of doing something like Dungeon Designer 3. And then Perspectives, if you want the 3D look. And then um, the Floor Plan Collections, again, is another more specific way of doing your uh, various interior designs where, once again, you can plan something specific, whether you're doing um, like a Dungeons & Dragons campaign, for those of you into that, or if you want to build something more for your fantasy story. Or, again, if you're building a mystery or thriller and you need to figure out where the killer was hiding, you know, before you know, Mr. John Doe came walking and uh, got unlucky, uh, you can use a map like this to figure that out. And then you got the battle maps, which is again another variation of that. Where um, you know, if you want a, a more uh, simpler look, but maybe like a, a stra strategy map, um, you know, maybe you're building a war story and you want to have a clear picture of where people are, or maybe even a spy story. You want to have a clear picture of where people are, and, and maybe you want to uh, plan the the protagonist's path through the building so that's believable that's one way you can do that and then symbol set and the rest are um, uh, just again more detailed things so and then you got the tome of ultimate mapping which i actually 
I have this one. It's pretty good. It's a twenty dollar book um, on ebook, but it's seven hundred fifty pages of just information on how to use all the things. Now, one thing that's not in the map extravaganza, but is available for those of you who are into sci-fi, is this one called um, this, I think it's Star Mapper. It's one of these here. Um, is it this one? Cosmographic or three? Yeah. And so, um, if you want to build something that's more sci-fi fantasy, then this would be your way to go. Um, but you can do. I'm not going to go through all of these. Um, I'm going to encourage you guys to go and look these up on your own and explore them. But if you go down the little, uh, if you go down the side here and click on these buttons, you can get a better example of what each one does and get a, a clear picture of how they all work. Um, and then, if you is this the star map one? No, I thought one of these gives you a star map engine designer. Character artist, that's something else entirely. Um, if you want something that's really nuanced, and you may want to look into the annuals. The annuals is when you have uh, just a whole bunch of different uh, volumes of things. So, for example, if you go to the 2021 subscription, uh, you'll see each one is $40. So it can add up, but you get a new map every month. Um, when I say new map, what I'm actually means you get new assets. So if you want to see um, an example of what you can get for your subscription for annuals. This is uh, just click on the buttons and get more information. But anyway, that's um, the Pro Fantasy software. I do think they're really good. Uh, they're one of the oldest ones in the um, map making community. So if that's your deal, uh, do give them a look. They are uh, because they're older. They uh, you can use an older computer to run them, but they are memory intensive, from my understanding. And uh, I know you have to refresh the content. Uh, frequently and you probably want to need to uh, review the um, the how-to's and the videos and things so it's um, it's extensive but it's one of the most versatile sets that you may have if you really want to get serious about map making so next give incarnate now this one I haven't really done a lot of investigation on I just know it's out there um, but this is one of the, the brand names in map making uh, and a lot of people use this um, it, you can see it's similar to the one we just looked at but it's a little more graphically intensive um, and if, yeah the high quality there if you really want something that's going to be good for your books or if you let's say if you want to have your website display a nice high quality map um, incarnate may be the one you want so um, the pricing is reasonable um, you go to the pricing for pro it's only 25 a year um, where you can do the free version with fewer assets but I, would, I think it makes more sense to do 25 a year if that's something that you want to um, if you're like a fantasy writer um, that you really want the your readers to be involved in your in your storyline then this may be the way to go um, I think the other one we looked at is good just for planning um, because again there's no commitment like you buy it once and it's yours it's just I mean it's expensive first time buy but um, but nevertheless it's you know if you're if you're not trying to market it you just want it for yourself that i would say the other one's probably your much stronger more robust version but you gotta admit just looking at the graphics here this is pretty impressive so i do encourage you guys to look at that if you have the time uh, next one we have is wonder drop this one i think is the most interesting of the bunch because this one even though it's uh newer than the others uh what this does is it works off of um, ai so um there's not really much to show off here you have to watch the trailer to really see it in action but i do encourage you guys to look at the trailer that they have um, and then maybe look at some youtube videos of people using it um, you'll find that the drawing is very intuitive and um, it's one of those things where people actually have fun using it unlike the others so if you just want to have fun making maps uh, this might be your way to go and it's pretty cheap too it's 30 dollars for one time uh, you do have these art packs or if you want to make like a pirate's cove can do that and just some the assets of what they look like um it's pretty straightforward and basic but uh, i mean it's also again it, it it's just you got a lot to work from um and for 30 dollars one time for something that's you know dynamically drawn i think it's pretty uh, impressive so if you want something that's easy to use fun to use and doesn't uh you know, require anything too uh, extravagant, then this may be your um, way to go. So again, that's called Wonder Draft. Uh, go back up to look. Uh, the requirements for Wonder Draft is pretty uh, easy here. Uh, just make sure you've got a graphics card. Um, 
your minimum should be something that's higher than what I've got. I got a 4,000, so I probably can't run it. Um, but if you do fit the specs, then this might be your way to go. Um, and then uh, from the makers of Wonder Draft, you have Dungeon Draft, and this is again another example of just a more kind of deep dive or a more intricate developed um, um, map maker. This does look pretty exclusive to you know the medieval style. So if you are building a mystery that's more modern, I don't know if you're going to get uh, your value out of this one, but it doesn't hurt to at least look into it to see if it fits your uh, style. And as they uh, get more advanced, they may, uh, of course, have more templates you can use. But again, look at the base requirements before you commit to it. Um, this one is cheaper. This is only $20. So for $50, you can get both and have a pretty good run of something that's dynamically drawn. So. Uh, again, that's uh, Wonder Draft and Dungeon Draft, if that's your deal. Now, if you want something that's more pixelated, um, Tiled is probably uh, one that you should be paying attention to. This is good if you want to also make a video game or computer game uh, based off of your uh, book, or even if you just want to make a game and skip the book entirely. Uh, Tiled is the way to go here because you can make extensive maps for, um, for your games. Pretty straightforward, and these are actually some popular games, like Shovel Knight's one that's made I think over a million dollars um, but um, this is definitely one you want to look into if you just want to do pixel art uh, or design something that's similar to what I did but it's uh, more high quality um, this is also I think the only one on the list that's free um, it's just a matter of downloading an itch and you can get going uh, you got your docs here we'll show you how to do it it's not um, I don't think it's gonna be an overnight thing that you learn how although it might be um, but it is versatile. It's one of the top in the market for designing, uh, designing pixel art maps. Uh, the other one that's uh, recommended is, uh, is one that I actually kind of forgot the name. That's why I didn't load it in. Um, but it's the one that Dead Cells uses. So if you look at the Dead Cells um, tile map engine, I think it's called like LDLR or something like that. But that one is um, like Wonder Draft. It's like tile maps with AI. And um, I'll put it in the description if I remember what it's called, so you can look it up on your own. But it's uh, another one that uh, is good for whether you know, you're making games or you're making if you want to just have like a, a nice visual style for your, for your map. So anyway, the question you'd be asking now is, what do you do with all this? So you know, the obvious answer is put it in your book if you're writing fantasy, which you can also use as a plan. So if you go to something uh, World Anvil, which I have not reviewed yet on my channel. Uh, someday I might, uh, but this is designed mainly for fantasy writers and um, game and dungeon game designers. Um, but if you are somebody who wants to make some kind of role-playing game, or if you wanted to write a, a story that's really in depth, World Anvil is the way to go. But this is one place where you can store your maps. Uh, so if you go to the map making section, you can get more information on how to integrate that. Uh, here is actually where you can get some more information on some of the best uh, map making software and you'll see that um, a lot of the ones I just showcased on this blog in fact it's how I'm um, incarnate believe it or not um, but then the other thing too is if you want to build your worlds um, again this is another place where you can go to do that but this is a um, an app uh, where you have to actually pay money to use it uh, which is again why I haven't done it myself um, but if you check out World Anvil, this is one place where you can use your maps. And then the other one that's popular that I have reviewed on my channel is Campfire Blaze. I have tried Campfire Blaze, thanks for asking. Um, so what you want to do here is if you have a subscription to Campfire Blaze, uh, you would add it to your maps and locations, and then you can pin the maps with details. And you can actually do that separately. You don't need to buy the entire set for that. If you want it just for map making and uh, tracking, you can get the map making bundle, which is somewhere on this chart. Um, right here, maps. It's only um, a dollar for a month or $10 for you know, a year or 30 to own. So if you want to just buy it outright, you pay 30 bucks and then you can use your maps on your map planner on Campfire Blaze and it's all good to go. So anyway, that's, um, that's all I really wanted to share today. Uh, again, if you are the type of person who wants to plan your story out or your settings uh, more detailed or maybe just your imagination is limited to characters and you struggle with creating scenes 
Um, then this is one option you may have in order to kind of get your ideas out on paper. I do recommend taking a look at the tiled ones in particular because where the um, map makers I think are limited are in the ideas that most of them are designed for fantasy and uh, you know role playing and all that. So you may be stuck with some like, older looking templates. There are a few uh, uh, modern tiles that you can use if you need. Uh, if you, you know, go to searching for it. But the thing with tiled in particular is if you do learn how to do pixel art, and it's not that difficult. No one said it had to be perfect, it just has to look like the thing you want. Um, you can make it look like anything you want and then um, it's also easy to lay it down. So I would look into tile too, plus it's free. And it's also a good skill to add. If you can do tile art, um, pixel art, uh, you can convert this into a game. And games are pretty straightforward too, depending on what engine you use. So that's an option to um, kind of multitask with uh, books and games if you want. But either way, um, if you need help laying out your, your ideas, then this is an option to do that. And it's one that's worked for me. Um, I've actually been able to build um, a superhero anthology off of uh, the game um, that it's based on because I've built the maps ahead of time. And so I can visualize where everything is laid out throughout this island uh, just because I've, I've already seen it. So. Um, it's a good practice to have, and if you really don't want to spend the money, if you want, if you're one of the old school, just get a notebook and draw a map, and you know, plan out your squares and you know, figure out what things are. But um, I just, I think it's a useful skill to have in your corner if you're, um, if you do can build the charts ahead of time so you can see where characters should be or how they might get through an area. It just makes it easier to not get lost or um, confuse your reader by adding a detail that didn't exist. In the previous iteration so um anyway that's just a bit of advice um i am not going to showcase any of these because there are other videos out there that will do that for each of these so if you are more interested in seeing how each of these work i would go ahead and just search the uh, youtube for um the different um, apps that we looked at and you can find a host of different videos of people using them and it'll, you'll get a nice feel for whether or not that works for you um but uh, if any of these are interested uh, or if you find yourself interested in any of these, uh, do let us know in the comments below. Tell us which one you're using, or if you found something that's not on this list that you find really useful, you know, do make sure you tell us in the comments below, and just give us your use case. Maybe you found something that's unique that doesn't apply to either books or map making. Maybe you just have a more interesting way. Maybe you want to do like a, um, you know, a design for your pillow, like you saw in the earlier screenshots. It's up to you. But anyway, that's it for today. Uh, do you come back next week? We're going to be doing um, another writer's bookshelf. And I actually can't remember what the title is. I think we're doing dialogue next week. If I'm not mistaken. I know it's coming soon. Um, but do you come back for that. And uh, share the video so more people get uh, informed on how to write. Um, if you're interested in writing or if you know anyone who is interested in writing, I do highly recommend that you share these. Um, because I think they're, these are books worth reading. But anyway, do come back for that. And that's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Have a good day, and talk to you later. Bye.